This is a Tascam 244 cassette Porter Studio I have for sale on eBay. Um, my setup here for this demo is the line out is going into Zoom recorder, these two inputs, and then my voice is being recorded just ambiently from this mic. Um, I've done a pretty poor job of John Carpenter's theme from, oh man, I want to say Big Trouble in Little China, what's it called? Escape from New York. Um, just done with the guitar and some pedals. I've used the um, four separate inputs in the back um, on the four different channels to check that all the EQ and um, pan and everything work. And I've got um, a, oh, my mind, I'm having a brain fart today. TC Electronic T2 Reverb is set up just to the master auxiliary so you can hear that returns and so on work. Um, unit's in pretty good condition, manual's complete. I mean, there's not much wrong with it cosmetically. I mean, underneath the plastic, underneath, um, there should be like eight screws there. There's only four, but there's one in each corner. Um, I've opened it. It all seems fine inside. There doesn't seem to be any bearing components or anything like that. Um, I got rid of most of the dust in there. I've cleaned most of the pots with electrical contact cleaner. Um, some of them still crackle a little bit. I wonder if that'll pick up. I'm not going well, to do. Maybe only when it's playing back. We'll test that out in a minute. Um, but I mean, generally speaking, the mixture's in pretty good nick. Everything works. Um, you can see I've already got the counter fast forwarded a little bit. These buttons are a little bit stiff. You need to give them a good press, I find, in the bottom left corner. Bottom right corner, rather. Does the trick. So is your returns working? I'll show you fast forward working as well. Rewind it again. Um, I bought this with all the drive belts inside it. I turned to goo, so had the pinch roller. Um, and the what do I mean? The idler tires were worn, usable but worn. So all those rubber parts have been replaced. Um, I'm trying to give it a bit of a cleaning while I'm in there. Now, despite that, there is a bit of wear and flutter. I think that's what I mean. There's a slight. Um, I've got one of the sounds. I'll be able to demonstrate it quite well. That there's a a kind of warbling vibrato to the playback of it. I mean the fidelity is good, like in terms of how it how so hot a signal you get back from the cassette compared to what went in through the mixer, that's pretty good frequency response, etc. That that's all fine. So you know the the tape heads seem to be in pretty good condition and I've cleaned them with um alcohol. Um you know, proper cleaning alcohol, like not like wicked or anything. Um so I think probably what it is is, I mean I'll look at I'll look up possible solutions to that um, and stick them in the auction. Um, the idler's kind of bouncing off the the spindle thing a little bit, um, so that might be that the spring that pushes it against. You got to imagine that the idler thing's here and it's, it goes up against the that spindle. It bounces against it a little bit rather than being a constant. So I imagine if you got that spring from Tascam, then that would sort it out. Um, probably quite an easy and expensive fix, but I've you know done enough on this for it to cease to be kind of profitable or fun for me to kind of like iron out that very slight um, issue. I mean, it might not be an issue depending on what you want to use it for. I mean, I think it's got quite a nice quality to it if you're using it as a kind of yield the collector piece in conjunction with um, digital technology that might be quite nice to record a part in this and have it a bit a little bit warped sounding and then bring it back into the digital domain uh, but you'll you'll hear what I mean uh, when I press play so here we go a little bit 
but not when, only when you're moving it. So the melody's on there. Trying to give you an idea that all these different pots work. I'm probably overloading the input of the zoom a little bit here, so don't don't worry about too much about it. Um, the idea you can probably hear I mean it seems to be I only noticed it really I'm thinking that pan but I mean there's a you know there's a little bit of crack down there um, not bad though like this oh, yeah, there's a little bit of noise in there I think that was actually one of the guitar cables I was using can you hear that? you know it's, it's subtle but there is a little bit of warble to it so I mean I don't think it's like a it's a deal breaker or anything but I just want to be honest with whoever buys it so yeah, I mean, I mean it's pretty good condition. I mean, I've seen these go for crazy money, but I don't know if it's realistic, really. I mean, there's folk on eBay at the moment are asking for four hundred and fifty quid or best offer for a you know professionally refurbished one. I mean, I've refurbished it a bit. I wouldn't call myself a professional, but um, I mean, what what's wrong with it? There's that that warble. I mean, presumably, if you could find somebody who's used to working with these. And you fix that whoop like 50 quid labour tops so you know I guess I'm going to be asked for like 150 quid for this plus postage so you know if you pay an extra 50 quid to get that then, then you've got pretty much a perfect working machine with a manual um, and you know you got it for 200 quid plus postage so I mean it's all a lot less than I mean actually I bid, I bid on one that I mean I didn't bid <laughs> anything like close to enough to get it but I bid on a refurbished one and it went to like 270 quid recently and that was like fairly cheap <laughs> compared to some of the places that I've seen other people asking for them so yeah I may mean, hope it's going to be reasonable value for someone thanks very much bye